So then after that album, the movie Class Act comes out. Right. Which was basically a house party type movie, but mm -hmm. with a different, a whole new storyline. Yeah. And it was dope. You know, it dope was, movie. I went to the theaters to go see it. Yeah. Well, you know what? The thing about Class Act that was so um, interesting and was funny was that story really kind of mirrored um, Play and I, and I's life growing yeah. up. Like he was the thug, I was the nerd. And you know that's that's really you know when we read that script I was just, was just like how the how the fuck did you get it down so accurately and um so yeah and that we had a we had a great time um, doing that that was uh, another first time director uh, Randall Miller and um yeah we we had fun doing that and that's probably by then and that movie was with was with Warner Brothers so mm -hmm. that was probably movie wise that was probably like our biggest biggest payday you know what i mean yeah we, we hit him up for that one well then house party three comes out yeah bernie mac is the in public it. demanded it <laughs> well bernie mac was in it rest in peace bernie mac was in it oh he was, was natural was he was yeah we knew we knew bernie was a natural to um you know not replace but to succeed uh robin harris you know so he was easy to cast as as his uh, younger brother um, he's you know from Chicago like Robin, comic just like Robin, dark just like Robin, same vibe. Yeah, no, I remember when I interviewed Phase on Love, right? <laughs> he was super close to Robin Harris, very right, super close. In fact, he was the one that did the voice for Baby Kids. Absolutely, yeah. He, he Reggie Hudson and Reggie Hudlin directed there you that go. as well. Yeah, Phase on is my man. Yeah, that's my man too. And in in the interview, he was saying how later on. He went to go work with Bernie Mac. Mm -hmm. And initially, he didn't like Bernie Mac because he felt like he was somehow impersonating Robin Harris mm -hmm. in a way. Mm -hmm. Not, it wasn't purposely, but he just felt like it was too close. Yeah. And he was saying how at one point, like it got to the point where they either had to get along or the whole project was about to fell, fall apart. And he said how Bernie Mac got together and said, Look, man, you ain't, you ain't got to respect me, but you're not going to disrespect me. Matter of fact, um, when I met Bernie for the first time, we didn't hit it off because I thought he was doing Robin. I didn't know he was doing Bernie. Yeah, they have a similar kind of style. And I was like, Pfft. and we we had a um, a standoff, and it was so funny because one night we had to do we had to do a we had to share headliners, me, Jamie, Fox, who was cold as a motherfucker back in the day. Follow Jamie Fox, oh my God. So follow Jamie Fox and Bernie. Um, in Atlanta, at the original Comiac Theater, um, I was like, this nigga doing Robin Harris, man, what the fuck? And then I, I was, then he caught me laughing, and then we, 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 we it, was, it was it was a fucked up vibe. I remember that. And then um, we broke from there. And um, he did the Def Jam, and then it came to a point where we had to talk because we had to do a TV show. He, had to, he did a television show called um, Pearl's Place. Me... Uh, Angela Means, um, what's my baby name? Um, Adele Givens. We all did a TV show, and before we did a TV show, the producers wanted me and Bernie to be brothers in the show. And Bernie's like, "Well, we we gotta sit down and talk because we got some shit to talk about." So he put me and him in the room, and we hashed it out, and. And it was really some some comedian bullshit. And he told me something I, I always remember. He said, you ain't got to respect me. Just don't disrespect me. <laughs> I said, you motherfucker. And he said after that, they just became cool. And then it was just all smooth sailing after that. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, just, I mean, working with Bernie was very similar to working with uh, with Robin, you know, what I mean, I had a lot of scenes with with you know Bernie as well, you know what I'm saying. 
so we got to spend you know a lot of time with one another mm -hmm. um yeah they were very similar and and you know to to your point and to i think to Faison's thinking i think he realized like um he it wasn't he wasn't maliciously trying to copy robin you know what i'm saying like look after tupac died you know a lot of a lot of people fell in a lot of rappers fell into that space mm -hmm. because that because that space was empty you know because because you, when you lose a giant you know, a lot of times, you know, you know, cats need to come in and, and, you know, if he's really great, you need more than more than a few to fill that void, like a Tupac, you know, like 89 motherfucker, you know, you know, X and Ja Rule and you know, everybody coming out trying to fill that vibe. Um, um, and, and but Bernie kind of did it. And I, and I thought he did it in a, in a uh, you know, a respectful way. He did it his way, like he reminded you of, of Robin, but he was, you he know, was he, you know, he had, you yeah. know, he had his own little, little tilt to it. Um, but just another great guy, you know, tells, you know, great stories, you know, 